You saw immediately the market loved that. It shot up yesterday on the news. I think that it's coming along. It's still on track. And I think especially that it's going to be sweeping, comprehensive, and deal with both individual and corporate taxes. I think recently, especially in the wake of the health care disaster, we've seen a lot of people saying, well, let's don't really go for the home run here. Maybe a single or a double, chip away a little bit at this. Two problems with that. One, if you're going to muster the political capital to get something done, you're probably only going to get one crack at this. So you either go for it now or you don't. And secondly, I've been digging deeper into the tax code, especially after just filing my own hundreds of pages uh, last week. And it's all, it's such a complicated piece of machinery. It's like a Swiss watch. If you start tinkering with one piece of it, then all the dominoes fall down. Like, let's say you want to have immediate expensing of capital expenditures, which I think a lot of people feel super pro-growth. Well, then what do you do about interest deductibility? You can't have both of them. No. And well, the House Ways and Means too. blueprint got rid of interest deductibility, as you know, and of course did have immediate expensing of capital. Yeah, you know, there's been a lot of fighting over this sort of border tax, but a lot yes. of people have told me, you know, you've got to have the border tax because you've got to get the revenue somewhere if you're going to lower the rate. So let's kind of say the border tax goes away. Then you've got to deal with the interest rate. and. That is going to be a huge fight. I mean, you've what do you got mean, Jim? The, the Treasury Secretary said a couple few weeks back that it was actually less, much less complicated than health care reform. Well, that's isn't that how many angels can dance on the head of a pin? I mean, I don't care which one is more complicated. They are both super complicated. And by the way, I don't think they really believe that. But if they don't realize it's complicated, then this is going to run into the same catastrophe that health care did. And, you know, putting aside the substance of the reform, which, of course, is super report, important, there's also the strategy here. And we've already seen the Republicans breaking into multiple camps over this. They're already arguing about it. So I hope somebody is not rushing into this and is, like, getting the supporters lined up so we do not have another internecine warfare over tax reform. No, you're not calling for nothing to get done, right? Oh, no, I'm all for it. I mean, I've been b pushing for tax reform ever since I've been on this program. Uh, I, I don't think there's any doubt that it is badly broken, that all the gains from 1986 have been chipped away over the years, and it's worse than ever. And I totally agree with the administration. This could be a huge pro-growth victory for them if they do this right. And I think, you know, Democrats don't want to cooperate, but most Democrats I talk to in Congress also agree this needs to be done. But is that where the complexity is in terms of Congress with the Democrats? Because it seems as if it breaks along a similar lines with health care, where you just have wings of the Republican Party with different priorities, whether it be kind of making it revenue neutral or not. Or then you have, you know, senators from states that are influenced heavily by retailers, don't want the border tax. I mean, it seems to get pretty messy. It does get messy, but if it, you can actually go back and look at what Hillary uh, Clinton was backing in, in tax reform, and there's a fair amount of overlap with the Trump stuff, especially with support for smaller business, getting the rates on you know LLCs, small businesses, partnerships at the same level as bigger corporations, having faster expensing, getting rid of the ridiculous depreciation schedule. So there, there is a lot of common ground, but I don't think we're in a world right now where this is going to be a bipartisan thing. 86 was bipartisan, but Reagan had a huge popular mandate and dragged the Democrats along. I don't think Trump's in a position to do that. Um, uh, being an avid reader of your columns, I know that your tax rate's pretty high. And you may hope it's going to come down, Jim, as a result of tax reform. But I have to tell you, the potential that they are not going to allow the deductibility of state and local income taxes for those of us who live in high tax states right. is going to be uh, a real bruising blow. Well, look, I, I'm trying not to look. I'm not I, I'm arguing about this because of my own personal I know taxes. you're not. I do pay, but I am I, bringing I that up it, because it is a life or death struggle for the governors of states such as California, New York. Even New Jersey, you can go on. A number of the high tax states who feel like it will really hurt them in terms of having workers there and businesses there. Absolutely. And I, and I will confess to something I have in common with President Trump. I get hit with the alternative minimum tax because of the high state and local taxes in New York. And I thought I was going to lower my outrageously high tax rate by giving more to charity. So I've been giving it away more lately. <laughs> And, but that got, uh, hit, yeah, right. I got hit on the alternative yeah, minimum tax on, on that, that too. But, to, so. but David's larger point is that uh, every, there's a third rail everywhere you look, yeah. right? There's a third rail on mortgage. There's yes. a third rail on state and local. Which is, state, 
which is why strategically there's only one thing that will get people behind us because the minute you start changing it, you're going to have losers and winners and they are all going to go into action. So you've got to have the carrot of the lower rates. That was the key to 86. They lowered the rates. Everybody, you know, the first thing people will do is say, okay, how does it affect me? You've got to give people something positive and that's the lower rate structure. Now, two things will come out about that. The Democrats will immediately say, oh, that's a tax cut on the rich. Well, the rich pay most of the taxes. If you're going to cut taxes, yes, they're going to save more. Let's just put that one to the side. Um, but then people are going to say, well, net, okay, I get the lower rate, but I'm giving up this deduction or something. I think what you'll find is there is a fairly small group of people who really lose. If you can actually lower the rate and get rid of a lot of these carve-outs, exceptions, and special interests, you can narrow it to a small enough group that you can get uh, popular support for it. But you've got to lower the rates. You've got to give people a carrot. But that group is made up of extremely wealthy people, I'm assuming. Well, they're very wealthy. They have very powerful lobbies. Some, of them Some were, represented by the leader of the Senate, Democratic leader of the Senate. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, that's another Senate. thing. That they, both support for this, I said there'd be some bias, yeah. bipartisan support. There's a lot of bipartisan opposition. There is. If you look back at who voted, remember in 93, when the real estate breaks got put back into the code that were taken away in 86, who signed that bill? Bill Clinton, a Democrat. And all the Democrats were pushing for this because of real estate interests. All right, Jim, uh, prediction time. What's the, okay. I don't even know what the date is, but I'm going to remember it. What do you think? Well, you mean, well, Are we going to get, as the Treasury Secretary said, significant... Uh, sweeping. Yeah, mind-altering. Those are my words. Okay. Uh, tax reform, <laughs> sweeping. I think we'll get, we will get proposed legislation. Will we actually get yes. it? Yes. Oh, God, that's a, that's a really <laughs> hard one. I don't want wishful thinking to get in the way of reality. I think it's going to be very, very tough. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.